what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy the Catching up with our guy Chris Lowe, ESPN, here on Off the Bench. Certainly want to ask you about LSU. It's a team that uh, I think every single year is going to have playoff aspirations since you expand it to 12. You've got a lot of new there for the Tigers as far as players and Gary Nussmeyer taking over for Jaden Daniels. You've got a completely new defensive staff. Right now, as we sit here at the end of June, what's your expectation for the LSU Tigers heading into this 2024 season? Well, I'd say first, it's pretty obvious Brian Kelly's not messing around. Yeah. To overhaul his staff, the way he did on defense. You know, a lot of coaches, even though they were bad on defense last year, they, they don't necessarily completely gut the defensive staff. He did that. He brought in guys for proving guys who understand that program. And Bo Davis is as respected a defensive line coach as there is in football. Uh, you look at what Blake Baker did at Missouri, the way that defense improved. You know, Corey Raymond is, is LSU. Uh, and, but I think, you know, you still, it, it tells you that Brian believes deeply in having coaches who have experience and have gotten it done in the past, but you still got to have players. And I think it's that same question, Mark, Jake, can they cover the pass? Can, can they, and it's not just the guys in the back end, you know, can they get the kind of pressure they need to, uh, to, to not allow teams to just carve them apart back there. And, you know, for all the, the criticism, their inability to cover the pass last year. You know, they gave up a lot of explosive plays in the run game on defense. Yeah. So they've got to be better. I do think a guy like Perkins, I think they'll use him better. I think they'll use him smarter. I think he'll be back to what we saw him be a couple of years ago. But here's the thing about LSU. Is, is they're good up front in the offensive line. I think you go back and look at teams in the SEC over the last few years who competed for an SEC title. You never see, you never ever see a team that's below average or even average in the offensive line, yeah. it has a chance to win. And this team, probably the best pair of tackles, at least among the best pair of tackles in college football, you got a starter quarterback. You mentioned that's Meyer, who's going to be sort of, you know, first time true starter. But you have a, a couple other situations among what I would call bubble teams in the league as far as the playoff in that same situation. You got Jackson all of Oklahoma, uh, you've got Nico. You know, Io Maliava in Tennessee, uh, they're, they'll be taking over for the first time. So I think how they play around the quarterback, guys that are going to be starting for the first time, to me is as important as how the quarterback plays. But clearly, much more when he's gotten chances, has shown the ability. Uh, I still think that they, it gets down to can they stop people consistently and not have to score 38, 40, yeah. 42 points every game to win. Man, that's a tough way to make a living in the SEC. Uh, that it is, CeeLo, and we saw that last year, number one offense in the country, and it felt like you needed every bit of the number one offense in the country to win 10 games like LSU did. And I like the way you kind of phrase that uh, with Tennessee and LSU maybe kind of being in the same group. That's the way that we've put it here on this show as well. Like, are you in the belief that it's Georgia, Texas, like in tier number one, and then there's like a whole bunch of teams like in tier number two? Where are you at right now as far as the hierarchy of the SEC going into the season? You know, I had a chance to visit both those places this morning. I went to Texas, I went to Georgia, and also went to Oklahoma. I think Texas and Georgia are the two most talented teams in the league. I really do. I think when it comes to depth, quality depth, it's so important to get guys hurt, to get later in the season. I mean, think about it. If you go, if you want a title this year, Jake, you may have to play 17 games yeah, uh, or 16. I mean, that's a ton of football games to play. And rarely do you make it through playing if you're just only five offensive line. I mean, you know, you, you've got to have guys in the secondary that step in when people pull hamstrings and stuff like that. So quality depth, I think those two are at the top when it comes to that category. This is Lane's best roster that he's had at Ole Miss by far. And they've got a quarterback in Jackson Dart who's going to be starting his third year as a starter. Yeah. And I think that experience is invaluable. But how do they how do they handle how does Ole Miss handle being a team that everybody's talking about a top ten team going into season? That's that's new ground for them, you know. So I would I would put them there in that next tier, and I certainly wouldn't forget about Alabama. Uh, they've got a kid I think in Jalen Monroe who will blossom with that new offensive staff, and I think their offensive line too has a chance to be really, really good. So those are probably my top four teams. 
But then you got bubble teams. You know, you got Missouri, you got Tennessee, you got LSU, you got Oklahoma, uh, that I all think have a chance to to maybe play their way in. And, and, and maybe the dark horse is Texas A&M and Mike Elko's yeah. first year. Uh, but the one thing I would add to before we go is schedules. Got to look at schedules. Yeah. And people always ask, well, how do you think this is? To me, the most manageable schedule in the league is Missouri's. When you look across the league, they've got the most, I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's the most manageable. And I'd say right behind them is Ole Miss, and Texas' schedule is not that bad. Here's why I like LSU's schedule. I think their hardest games, Jake, inside the league come at home. Yeah. And anytime you can play those tough teams at Tiger Stadium, uh, that's a big advantage. All right, last one before we let you go, CeeLo. Billy Napier, Florida Gators, speaking of schedules, brutal schedule. Certainly the last five games of the season. I mean, you're playing all the teams in the state of Florida, so like you're going to get their best shot. Like I just can't see a way. Even though I think Florida will be improved on the field, I can't really see a path for them to even get to eight wins. And if they don't get to eight wins, like what does the future look like for Billy Napier? Well, I'll start with the schedule. It's the hardest schedule I've seen um, since I've been covering the league. Now, that's honestly, that's in August. You know, the schedule's changed when you get to, no, to October, November, but I've never seen one going in the season that looks this daunting. Uh, I do think they'll be better. I think they'll be better than a lot of people think they will. I think Merch at quarterback is very underrated, and they brought in some guys. I think it will help them in the transfer portal. But, you know, I, I just don't see a path that they're – a team in late October or early November that they have a chance to make the playoff. But that said, I wouldn't be just shocked if they somehow got to seven or playing for eight wins and maybe have a chance, you know, to have a winning season yeah. at Old Bowl. I really think with that schedule, even though they have not been good the last few years, if he can somehow carve out a winning season, let's say they're seven and five, I just I think they'll be patient with it. Now, if it's a losing season again and they're losing to everybody that counts, and they don't show a lot of progress, then yes, he's going to have a hard time keeping his job. All right, there he is, Chris Lowe, ESPN. That was a great job over there. Catch his latest articles on ESPN.com. C. Lowe, we appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks, SEC Media Days in Dallas. I'll be there, man. It's great to, great to be with you, Jake. And uh, be weird. Be weird, be weird in a good way to be uh, in a new locale for Media Days yep. in the big D. Yeah, no question about it. Look forward to that. Chris Lowe, again, ESPN.com. Good enough to join us here on OTB. Wow, Jake, what incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications we post every single day here on OTB LSU.